Hey guys, welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. So today I'm out in the new shop that's now like two years old and still unfinished. And uh, I thought I'd just kind of, uh, we're all, I guess I'm trying to give you an update. So the Chevelle is almost ready to go home. I mean, there are some little knickknacky things that I'm trying to finish up and make perfect for, uh, for the customer, the owner. And he's already been down again to see the car. It rained the whole time he was here, so he didn't get to actually drive it, uh, other than he drove it in and out of the garage and in my driveway, and you probably saw that video already. That's it, it hasn't been driven, it has rained. The road I live on and my shop is on is just a mud bath, and I refuse to go out there and put that car through it. Um, it does need to get on a trailer and go get an alignment and get the AC charged because those are two things I can't do here at my shop or I don't have the equipment to do here. Um, so I've got a place that do, did the exhaust. They will also do the, those two items for us. Um, other than that, I've got projects starting to stack up. I've got another one coming in sometime this week and it has, it, well, it has not nothing to do with cars, but it's not a car. So when it gets here, I'll show you that. Um, Otherwise, I thought I'd just kind of show you the shop and kind of give you an idea of what I'm hoping to do still. Um, I don't think it's gonna happen this summer because as many of you probably have noticed or listened to some of the videos, I broke my ankle on April 2nd of this year. And last week I got to take the boot off and start walking again. Um, I guess that was Friday, a week and a half ago. And I went back today, got my flight physical, so I'm back to go, I'm, I'm ready to go back to work and fly airplanes, which means I gotta get rid of this, and, but I get to go earn some money. And because of that, uh, because of that, all this time I've had off, and it allowed me to finish the, the Chevelle, but it didn't let me get any time in on the shop. Um, I couldn't have done it anyway because of the, because of the boot, and I was conserving my cash, uh, because, you know, you don't want to be spending money if you're not bringing any in. So anyway, I thought I'd show you what the plans are. Hopefully I'll get a little bit done this summer and show you guys some of the projects. You know, the, the shop is a big building and it is already filling up so much that it's just it's frustrating because I want to get in here and get to work. So let's take a look. Uh, right there, I've got a plasma table that was given to me by my father-in-law and still needs to be assembled. I've got my sandblaster sitting up there on some some 55-gallon uh, drums, so it needs a, it needs a permanent home. Uh, my parts washer, a couple plasma cutters, a washing machine for some reason. Or actually, I think that's the dryer. <laughs> um, refrigerator for beer, because you need that. A couple of air compressors. Would love to be able to go get one of the newer uh, oh, rotary air compressors. They're super quiet. I mean, you can have a conversation sitting next to them, but uh, the black one here, the Cobalt, I've had for, uh, I don't even know, five to seven years. Change the oil, you know, once a year every now and then. And other than that, it just is a running beast. So I have no... Uh, no plan to get rid of it until it breaks. This Craftsman has very little use on it. It was given to me, um, but it is a one of those oil-free compressors. So when it does run, it's really loud. But I figure what I'm going to do is link the two tanks. Plus, I have a third tank that that is out in another building still. And when I get all this put together, we'll get put into this system. So I'll link all three tanks, and then if my Cobalt were to go down. While I was trying to figure out a new compressor solution, I could use the Craftsman as a backup and fill all the tanks. So, um, but you know, when you get something, I traded a smaller compressor for it because they had no room for the big compressor. And I know some of you are going to see that PVC pipe and say you're not supposed to put air in it. It goes all the way around the building here, or well, all the way down that one wall. And the double line there acts as a dryer. It, uh, Allows the expansion, expands up there at the top. See where that T is. That allows the air to travel up, expand, and then the fluid to drop out of it. And so 
I get a little bit of water here out of these two. By the time it gets to the other side of the building, way over there, and this is the only wall with air on it, by the time it gets onto that other side over there, I have almost no water in the in the air at all. Those of you who say you shouldn't be using PVC for air are probably right. Um, every building I've ever had, though, has had it. And I've never had a problem. The stuff's rated to 200 PSI. My compressors only run up to 135. So as long as it doesn't sit in the sun, it hasn't been a problem. So as some of you will remember from when I was putting the building up, I had these two bays that were dirt. They're still dirt because I haven't sprung for the money to to uh, pour the concrete and put the in-floor heat to, uh, tubing for the in-floor heat in. Um, the Jeep from way back is still here. The gentleman that owns that has been out of the state working, has been in no hurry to get it back. And because this shop isn't really in use as a shop, it uh, it's not in the way. So just leave it, leave it be. Um, additionally, we have the Mustang, the Rustang that some of you will remember. Um, I'm hoping that project will come back to life this summer. Uh, we have buried in that mess is a red Mustang that is going on the chassis of this SS uh, Trailblazer. So we'll have an all-wheel drive Mustang out of that. Um, and then a lot of materials here for the electrical that because still only have power on this wall and a few outlets and power all the way down to the compressors and then that's it everything else out here there's no more power I have one light in the whole building one exterior light so those things are are coming um, standing here basically have this whole bay is empty except for the Jeep and as we get over here got my son's furniture from when he moved out of his apartment and hasn't moved in anywhere yet, so it's still here. Uh, somebody just gave me both of these tanks. They're, I believe their father is who passed away, and they didn't have any use for them and didn't know what to do with them. So they're both out of date, but I should be able to get something worked out for that. Um, so then we're over here. We have the... Uh, Plasma table, it's a five by 10 and I'm trying to make it down into a five by five and then I want to put a water bath under it to uh, collect the dust and keep that mess. Sand blaster sitting up on some 55 gallon drums so it needs a home. My parts washer, uh, a couple more plasma cutters, just tools that I'm gonna use and you know, um, this uh, grinder recently given to me along with this big air jack same people that got gave me the tanks and then I have part my tools that I just kind of been stacking up here uh, tubing roller bead roller my older uh, Harbor Freight version of the uh, sheet metal brake which is still a great brake you just kind of limited to 18 gauge and smaller one of my toolboxes battery charger um, you're gonna see a lot of this Harbor Freight again um, I still use this all the time. It's uh, great for rolling metal and and doing small pieces in the uh, brake there. And the shear, not not so much. It's it's kind of a pretty weak on the shear side. Uh, English wheel, used it quite a bit in the fabrication on the Chevelle. Probably get back to using it more on the Mustang. Same with the planishing hammer. Uh, this is a clutch brand. And very similar to what you can buy at uh, Eastwood or Harbor Freight. Uh, I picked this one because it had some really great reviews. But uh, it's a great tool. Probably do a Tool Bag Tuesday on that and the English Wheel Hills here soon. Um, here you go, project from the past. The hood that uh, started out for the Mustang. Still waiting for me to finish it. So for those of you who are wondering, still here, hasn't disappeared and some of these are part, like this bench here this work table is out of my old wood shop and i have a lot of tools to bring over from that still table saw radial arm saw that kind of stuff um, in this area that we're in now let me back off so the third bay of the shop has a door at the back as well as the door at the front and this is the bay that will initially get the two post lift out of my other shop 
put in here back here in the back somewhere um, trying to figure out where the plasma table is going to go almost thinking that it would be better to put the plasma table all the way at the back and then move the the lift forward but i really want the front half of the bay for for just being able to bring in a vehicle and not actually have to worry about a lift in there so um we'll see how that's going to work then bay four which at the front really isn't a bay um it's hard to tell from this camera but this wall is angled so you only have about you have the back half of the shop and then and you can see where i've started building a wall there the intent here is that that wall will extend all the way up even with this post here i can get this and so that back corner of the shop is going to be a room that all my wood shop tools will be in there and table saws that kind of stuff so that all that dust and grime and dirt will not, uh, you know, sawdust will not be out here on vehicles. And then the whole thing, the reason the wall is that tall, the whole thing is going to get an upper deck above it and be a giant uh, storage area. Um, I have that forklift, and so once I get it running again, because, again, another project that's not done, I'll be able to set everything up on top of the, uh, the upper deck there. So, and then all my toolboxes from this post here, to the front, this it leaves a triangle area. So you can get back here far enough where you can kind of get an idea of the shape of that. Um, so that area there where the bags are on the pallets, all of that will then get all my toolboxes in that triangle. And that'll be my tool storage, you know, hand tools and power tools, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm thinking the English wheel and the roller and all these other tools and of course this big you know uh, boss 16 brake thinking all of those will end up along the the wall that i've started probably coming along this wall up to here and then going back that way to the post um probably try and get most of them along that wall and then a few of them along this back wall here I'm going to try and have as much of it on wheels as possible so you can roll them to where you're actually working because, you know, the idea of having to take your part, go work, go work it through a planishing hammer or an English wheel for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and then have to walk back across the shop, that drives me nuts. So plan will be to try and get all that stuff on wheels or, or locate it all in such a way that it's uh, more readily usable. Working back all the way back over to the first bay there. Yeah, my idea, the reason that door is so short is you can kind of see where I started a wall there. Um, I'm going to put another balcony above that. You can see that man door in the back there. It has to be above that height, but that that's going to be about exactly where the, the ceiling or the, the floor is up there. And that'll all be storage above, uh, above a... A big work area on that side as well and originally i thought i was going to make that a paint booth under there just build a paint booth thinking now what i'm going to do is put all my welders and grinders and all that kind of stuff in that room and have the ventilation and use that room to do all my grinding and welding and and other types of really messy metal working um we'll see if that pans out but that's what's going on that wall will get extended up to the height of that door and the, above the roller on this door and then i'll have you know one full bay of storage above it so that's it that's what's going on at the shop um as you can tell there's two lights back there and they're just plugged into an outlet but the rest of the light in the room is actually coming from the skylights above so it's done a really good job uh leaving the white insulation it really helps with reflecting the light so as i as I begin building walls in here, I intend to uh, put some kind of wall board up, probably a, a plywood or an OSB or something, and then painting it white again just to keep that, that uh, light reflective feel. So that, uh, you know, or a light gray even. Um, just something that, that looks good and, and helps keep, keep the place lit up real well without having to have a lot of lights in here for the daytime. Hey, so that's the shop. And uh, just wanted to thank you all for watching. Uh, this probably be like a 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday supplemental type video, just something to kind of show you all what's going on. Um, if I don't go to work tomorrow, I've got a project planned for tomorrow that'll get filmed and a couple more tool bag Tuesday things coming up for you. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in a week or so.